Hi there, this is Abhishek and this is the second video of time series analysis uh, video series. So in the first video I have given you the quick introduction and here in this video I will just walk you through some sample code so that you can get the basics of time series. Alright, so let's go ahead and to start with the time series, we need to create a time series. So let's go ahead and do that. So basic example is the uh, just some sample sales data that I have gathered. And what I'll do is uh, that I will put this entire code on one of the blogging site, the blogger site, which I maintain and you can find the code in the description. So you don't have to really, you know, redo this entire piece one by one and just get the uh, data and code directly from there and modify it based on your needs. Okay, so this is the sales information, uh, some sample observation that I've just created for this demo. And what I'm doing is uh, pressing control enter in this for this command. So here what it has done is it has created me a sales for one to 16. Now this one to 16 can be year, can be quarter, or even can be month. So it's really up to us how this sales, how the series is, when it is starting and when it is ending or what type of series it is. So that's why I have given you three different example. So first example is with the sales underscore TS is the new object that we are creating with the help of TS command. TS command is nothing but the time series. So what it does is it helps us creating a time series based on the object, the data that we have, this particular vector. So we are specifying sales, this vector that we created here. We are saying that uh, start of the year is 2000, end of the year is 2015, and frequency is equals to one. That means it is an yearly series. That means one data point is attached to one number, which is starting at 2000. So for 2000, the value is attached to this. For 2001, value is attached to this. 2002 is this. 2003, so on and so forth. For 2015, should be the end, the last one. So if the frequency is one, that means you are creating the the yearly time series. Next is the quarterly time series. So again, same parameters, but what you are saying is that frequency is equals to four. That means uh, create the quarterly time series. So based on the data points that you have provided, it will create it. Another thing that you can do is you can specify when the time series quarter is starting. Let's say it is starting in the second quarter. So what you can do is specify two, right? And similarly, if it is ending in a particular quarter, you can mention the end quarter like this with the same similar parameter. So that's the advancement that you can do. Third is the monthly time series. So if uh, it is monthly, then frequency will be 12 as you have 12 months in a year. Again, like quarter, you can specify when the month is starting. Let's say month is starting uh, on May. So we have specified this. With that way, uh, your data will be mapped correctly uh, to the time points, whether month or quarter or year. So what I am going to do is I will just go ahead and create the yearly time series for this example. So I'll press control enter and here a time series has been created. Earlier we created the sales object and it was a number one to 16. Now it is the sales underscore TS. Even if you want, you can check the structure of this data and say sales underscore TS and control enter. So it says that it is a time series 1 to 16 from 2000 to 2015 uh, and these are the values. Great. After this, uh, you may want to plot the time series because in the very first video I mentioned that uh, the very first thing you will do with the time series is plot it so that you can understand uh, whether it is what kind of time series it is whether there is any trend, seasonal, cyclical or irregular component present in this. So if you have not seen the first video, I really encourage and go back, look at the first video which I uploaded yesterday on 1st of November. So 
control enter plot.ts is the command so remember this sales underscore ts is the parameter that we passed which we created over here and here my time series so let's analyze this so we can see first of all that there is a trend component because this is a linear upward trend so you can very easily identify that <laughs> apart from that uh, i don't see any seasonal but little bit of cyclical trend some trend is going here here sometimes it is going down there so little bit of cyclical trend what i would say not not very apparent but some sort of uh, cyclical or somebody would argue that no it's not cyclical but irregular so it really depends on the knowledge of your data if you have a good knowledge you will be able to very easily say that no it's not cyclical and prove me wrong and say it is an irregular one okay so idea is just to get analyze this chart and based on that do our further processing so after you have plotted it let's say you identified any irregular or seasonal fluctuations then what you can do is you need to generally transform the time series and the transformation you can do is by using the log transformation using the log function so this is just an example so i'll just correct the spelling sales so this is just an example uh, but as you can see there is nothing so if it is a irregular trend you can see and uh, you have proved me wrong and say that it's an irregular one so let's go ahead and transform it okay i accept that so control enter and then again plot um, sorry let's change this enter and now still that level of trend is present so probably there is something else so we may need to little bit go deep down and look into the data okay so basic idea is that how you would do the transformation in case seasonal or random fluctuations are present so that's the log transformation that you do after this uh, we will do some of the uh, more you know uh, analyzing you can say or uh, you know smoothing of time series with the help of the ttr package if you don't have this then you can go ahead and say install dot packages ttr and it will install the package since i have already installed it i will go ahead and import it so what i'm doing right now is i'm creating another object with the order value let's say this is the order value of a company and we have stored it in an vector and now we are creating a time series object the ts object so control enter and let's plot the time series first of all so this in this chart the time series clearly saying that uh, there is a lot of components that is present cyclical it may be seasonal also and sometimes uh, looks like some irregular components that is present so first thing in a time series analysis or if I, I would not say first thing but generally you know you try to smooth the time series to get some meaning out of it so right now you are not able to get anything you cannot really say that there is a trend component or not so to predict or to see whether a trend component is present or not or some sort of uh, uh, right behavior that you want to see from the time series you may want to smooth it and there are two ways one is the SMA, which is simple moving average, a function part of the TTR library. So what it does is uh, it takes the number of period, like you want to simply do the moving average of last based on the last three period, last five period, or last seven period. So that's the kind of uh, uh, head and trial method you would really need to do to to smooth the time series to make some better understanding from it so let's try to do it for three time period so control enter and uh, control enter to plot it little bit we could see that now the trend is becoming apparent some cyclical trend is becoming or seasonal trend is becoming apparent so let's try to do it with five 
area control enter control enter now it is very much clear and uh, some you know cyclical and seasonal trend is still very much apparent now try to do it with the seven period control enter for seven period and control enter and much more smoother time series but if you observe that the the more period that you are using the the more data points you will going to lose in this case so for example this time series was uh, starting at 1996 and ending at 2015 and it was a yearly time series and if you could see that because you are seven period uh, ahead that's why it is starting somewhere 2001 or 2 and going all the way up to 2015 but in case of let's say three period time series uh, you will be somewhere around 1999 or 98 probably so that's the basic idea that uh, though more number of period produces the better output but there is a risk that you will lose the same number of data points from the starting and this may impact when you are doing the forecasting so that's the trade-off you need to keep in mind and do the smoothing so with the five i think is is the much better one if i plot it it's it is becoming uh it's it's giving me quite good result and showing me that there is a trend present there is a, some some sort of a cyclical or seasonal trend which is present so probably that's that's the best for me and i can go ahead and do um analysis or do the further analysis prediction based on that apart from simple moving average uh, you have exponential moving average so if i go down here so again uh, exponential moving average uh, number of periods so for three period and the ratio so this ratio is the additional component for the exponential moving average and the idea behind this component is uh, exponential moving average is an aggressive uh, or a weighted moving average what you can say and it provides the weight to the most recent observations and that's why we call it aggressive because uh, the more recent observation it is the the better weight or the more weight it will going to get based on the previous observations as they were also keep getting the weights so that's why uh, it is aggressive and tells you the what i have seen generally comparison to sma ema provides aggressive and uh, much better result uh, let's say you are doing stock market forecasting or stock market prediction then in that case exponential moving average is is something people really try and because they want how the uh, recent behavior of the of the stock is based on the moving average so more the weight is more aggressive this time series becomes and you need to really based on your subject matter expertise you need to decide uh, which weight is making sense so you can give anywhere between 0 0.5 0 0.25 0 0.75 so that means id anything below one and more than zero so let's try to see this and press ctrl enter let's try to plot it so this is how the time series is coming for 0.25 let's try to do it for 0.5 weighted mean and control enter control enter still it try to smooth it a little bit more and control enter for ratio is equals to 0.75 exponential moving average control enter let's try to plot it so as you can see uh, as we are moving ahead you know it is trying to further smooth or make these uh, these particular peaks more sharp and based on the most recent value it will try to show you what will be the more the next recent one if you are trying to forecast it so in this data set what i am able to see is that uh, simple moving average is becoming uh, kind of a winner for me because with that i was able to see very clearly 
this simple moving average i was able to see very clearly that there is a trend that is present there is uh, uh, some cyclical and seasonal seasonal or random uh, that is present but here with the with the exponential moving average i could only see that okay probably there is a trend but there is a uh, irregular component which is present in this time series so not very useful for me and i will go ahead and use this simple moving average for my analysis because that that is providing much more beneficial result to me so that's that's the uh, knowledge and expertise you need to gain um, based on the data which one is uh, making sense for you based on your subject matter expertise and try to do this so that's pretty much all I have for you in this video. I don't want to make it a large one because it is a concept uh, which needs to be covered like in some 5-10 videos if, if we need to cover each and everything and uh, don't want to burden you with the, all, all the new concept. So go ahead and try this on your data set. Try to create time series, try to use smooth it and uh, if you have any stock related data I would really encourage you to try to smooth and try to see. Uh, how it is giving you the value. So that's pretty much all for this video and meet you in the new video, the new topic.